I want to talk to couples this morning. But if you're not married or you don't have anybody, don't shut me down. Because you might be getting ready to get married or you may want to know why it messed up and I don't know what to look for the next time or whatever. But uh, I want you to listen to me, all right, as, as we do this. I want to look at Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. And then also uh, chapter 5, verse 25. But let's look at 1 and 2 first, verses 1 and 2. You there? Amen. All right. And it says, therefore, be imitators, imitators of God as dear children. We, we need to look at these things when we see these words. We need to really look at it. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love. Walk in love. As Christ also has loved us and given himself for us and offered a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. And that, that has to do with the worship that they used to worship with the incense and everything. And, and, and that's what our worship and praise should be to him. It should be a sweet smelling aroma. Verse 25. Husband, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church. And gave himself for her. Let me read it again. Husband, love your wives. Just as Christ also loved the church. And gave himself for her. And I want to use as a subject. A walk of love. A walk of love. Most gracious and eternal God. Father, I thank you. And, uh, Lord, I just ask that you have your way. I can do nothing without you. You take over. Have your way. Let me say everything you want me to say, not anything that you don't want me to say. I'll never fail to give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I asked my pastor one time years ago when I was young, I said, Mom, I said, I always called her Mom. I said, Mom, why didn't it tell the wife to love the husband? And she looked at me, she said, If you love your wife, the way Christ loved the church, she can't help but love you. <laughs> and started shouting. I said, ah, oh, glory. <laughs> and during that time, she was really going through it. Usually, when I back up and I start at verse 22, the women start to shut down on me. <laughs> and they don't hear the rest of the message of what I'm trying to say. I start reading, I look up and they roll in their eyes and they look up, ain't no man gonna tell me what <laughs> and, they, and, and, and they just clam up and they miss what the word of God is saying. So 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 ladies, hang with me, all right. So let's let's look at let's 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 back up to twenty two. Now I'm then I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to you because I got your attention, but don't shut down on me. So it says, Wives, submit to your own husband as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as, Christ, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their husband in everything. And then in verse, then in verse 25, it says, husband... Love your wives just as Christ loved the church. Wives submit. And usually when we, when we hear that, and, 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 and you know, and, and I see some of y'all looking at me funny now. And men, we, we, we messed this up a little bit because we did it. And I, I didn't say obey. I said submit. I, I, I married a couple one time. And uh, he got the cameraman to give him a little bitty microphone. It was hidden. And he turned it up real loud where nobody could hear it but him and what was being taped on the video. And so while I was marrying him, I noticed he was moving his mouth, but I couldn't figure out what he was saying because it was like a whisper. And I'm, I'm, I was marrying them. And uh, 
he was going, obey, obey. When are you going to tell this woman to obey me? Throughout the whole service, that's what he was saying. Obey. This woman got to listen to me. Obey. 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 What about the obey part? What about the, and he kept going. And you know, you never say that in the marriage and stuff. Obey part. Obey part. And it was a big joke. But when you looked at the video of the wedding, you could hear him saying those words and stuff. Oh, obey. What you tell this woman to obey me and all that stuff. And uh, you know what? They're still married today. But she's been the leader of that family. <laughs> she's made more money than he has. He's had to depend on her. He has to look to her and everything. And, and, and she has had to call the shots and everything. He, he's worked and did pretty good. But she's always been the bird. And I wonder sometimes, <laughs> did God punish him for that? I don't know. <laughs> But let's go here. Let's go here. Everything about our relationship with Jesus and each other is wrapped up in love. You know, everything about everything we do when it comes to Jesus Christ as Christians is wrapped up in love. I, I mean, you don't. You, you remember 13th Corinthians? I don't care what you're doing, how you're doing. Everything is wrapped up in love. Your marriage is wrapped up in love. Raising your children is wrapped up in love. Working on your job should be wrapped up in love. Everything about each other and us is wrapped up in love. But so many times when we hear that word submission, we're all and all kind of walls go up. And I, and I, and I see the, the wives sometimes they go to rolling around. Yeah, submitting to you, no way. But listen, let me, let me tell you something about submission. Submission can never be required by one human being over another. We can never make anybody submit to us. And submission can never be required by one human being over another. It can only be given on the basis of trust. Do you trust that man enough? Does he, you trust him enough that you will submit? Do you trust him enough that, that you will submit? Because the only way that, 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 that you are required to submit is on the basis of trust. I, I trust you as a man of God to submit to you because I know you're following God. And I don't mind being with you. Women are never made to be second to man. That's not it. You're never, we're never made to be second man. It says we're neither bond nor free, male nor female, but we're all one in Christ Jesus. No, there's no up and down levels and all this, or the man's the greater and the woman. The, no, man has never been made to. Am I having trouble with this mic, guys? Are you doing something to me? I sound like Dark Vader up here or something. I don't know. All right. But the wife is specifically called by God. To accept her husband's leadership if he's lining up with the word of God. Y'all didn't hear me. Uh, the wife is specifically called by God to accept her husband's leadership if he's lining up with the word of God. Now if he's not following God. <clears throat> well what, what do I do if, if my husband ain't saved? What do I do if my wife ain't saved? You live the godly life in front of them. Amen. For Corinthians said, you might change them, you might save them with your wife. Wives, if you're saved and your husband ain't saved, don't just give up. Amen. You live, you let them see Jesus in you in front of them. Husband's the same way. If your wife ain't saved, don't just go all berserk. Allow them to see Jesus in front of you. Amen. So the Bible does not put males over female, but does call for the husband to accept, accept that responsibility in the same spirit of self-devotion as Christ gave the church. Listen to me, fellas. So it says, husband, love your wife, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. How should the husband... Treat his wife. 
if you're going to love her the way Christ loved the church. How should you treat your wife? Well, first of all, you know you got to love her. Does not Jesus love the church? Who's the church? Does he not love us? Love your wife. You love her. Sacrifice for her. Greater love has no man than a man give his life for his friend. Sacrifice for her. Listen to her concern. Doesn't God listen to us? The church, doesn't he listen to the church? Doesn't he? Listen to her concern. And then here's one I need to work on more myself. I'll, I'll raise my hand. Be sensitive to her needs and her hurts. Just like your own body. Be sensitive to her needs and hurts. And sometimes I even get so caught up in the ministry that I'm not sensitive to my wife's needs and hurts. If I got a headache, I don't run around and just keep the headache all day long. I'm going to take something. I care about my body. If I, if I, if I, if I, if I cut myself or something like that, I ain't going to just sit there and bleed. <laughs> bleed to death? No, I'm going to do something. You care about yourself. Do you care about your wife the way you care about yourself? So we are to be sensitive. To, oh, y'all looking at me kind of funny up in here now. <laughs> to her knees and her hurts. Just like your own body. Okay, so what should the wife do? How are you supposed to deal with this? Well, you got to look at the bridegroom, Jesus, in the church, the bride. So how is the church supposed to be to God? This is the way you're supposed to be to your husband. Respect him. Acknowledge his calling as the head of the family. Listen to him. Amen. Listen to him. Here's a hard one. Praise him. <laughs> I'm not talking about going to somebody else. Oh Lord, honey, I got a good man. I, you know what I, I'm talking about? Praise him. How, how many times have you ever told him? How I thank God for it. How many times have you ever told him? You don't go to somebody else and just talk about Jesus all the time, do you? I'm praising Jesus. He don't know it, but I'm praising Jesus. Well, that would be, that would be the same way. <laughs> Guys, I can't build a doghouse. <laughs> We, when we were building this church, they took my tools away from me <laughs> and gave me a plastic hammer and nails and said, don't you touch nothing else. <laughs> I, got, I, I kept looking at that at our, at our nail lane boy and I said, I'm going to get that bad boy in a minute. <laughs> as soon as they turned their back, boy, I picked that thing up. And I, they said, get it away from him. Get it away from him. <laughs> I have a hard time sometimes with Stuff like that and going out and play a little music. But man, when it comes to doing things like that and stuff. And sometimes my mamie would come and she said, baby, you really did cut that grass good. <laughs> <laughs> I probably going to miss spots and everything else. <laughs> but don't be ashamed to praise him. Amen. Then here's the key. Be unified with him as a true helper. Lord have mercy. Y'all hear me? Amen. Be unified with him as a true helper. And, and this is scripture. This is scripture. I want you to, I want you to look at this. Look at Genesis chapter 2. Look at Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. I'll give you time to get over there. I'm trying my best to stay with my notes guys because I want you to hear this. I don't want somebody telling me something later on that I didn't even say. Genesis chapter 2. That microphone jumping out of the place. Y'all there? Yeah. 
What did I tell you? What was the last thing I said to you? Well, I know I told you Genesis, but I said. Yeah, I know. I told you that. I know what I told you. But one of the things that we're supposed to do is be a true helper. Even in the church, we're to be a true helper to Jesus Christ. We're, 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 we're his helpers. He, he, uses a, he could have spoke a word and, 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 and or told the angels to do it. But he chose you and I to reach out to love. And, and again, I know I forgot. I got in here. Anybody in here not saved, man, I'm glad you're here. But I just don't want you to leave here still not being saved. Holler at me before you leave this place. Let me pray with you. Get this thing right. So he said, be a true helper. Verse, verse 18 said, and God and the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him, compatible with him. I will make him a helper. And, 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 and then the last part of 20 said, but, the, but for Adam, there was none, no fam, no one fam. As a helper, as he looked at all the animals he'd made, everything he'd made, he said he couldn't find anybody that was compatible to, to be a helper for him. So what did God do in verse 21? And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man... He made into a woman and he brought him, brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She should be called woman because he was, she was taken out of a man. And the, therefore a man shall leave his mother and father and be joined to his wife or cleave to his wife and they shall become He didn't take her from his feet for him to trample over. He didn't take her from his head for her to rule over him. He took her from his side, close to his heart, under his arm of protection, to be his partner, to be his helpmate, to be by him. It's a team, guys. You're one. You're one flesh. And you're together. And you're a team. Even when you, you're submitting, there's, there's a lineup of the way things has to be. But it's not like somebody's your boss. Or you somebody slave or something like that. You are a team. She's your helpmate. That woman you got, that's your partner. That man you got, that's your partner. And you guys that's single, if that's not, I don't care how cute he is. I don't care how much you like his eyes. Or I like the way he walks. You better be looking to see if he loves the Lord. You better be looking to see if he's led by the power of God. Lord have mercy. I'll get off of that. He, pastor going to went the nose. <laughs> your helpmate. Your partner. To be by your side in everything that we do. That's why he gave us that. Flesh of our flesh. Now. Here's the key. Y'all going to got real quiet on me. Here's the key to the whole thing. No husband and wife can do this in their own power and by their willpower. You can't walk out of here today and say, well, you see what the word said. You see what the preacher said. This is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. We no, you'll fizzle out. It won't work. You see, it takes the power of God. He will help you. So, uh, Ephesians 2.10 says. We are his workmanship. Created to, unto good works. God makes us what we are. It takes the power of God. 
Man, it's, it's, it's a process. It's a process. God is not asking us to do anything of our own strength. But he said, I will empower you. I'm going to give you the power in this process of, of, of getting there. God empowered us. It's the same thing. We talk about being tough, together, doing uncommon things, focused and faithful. We can't do it on our own. It takes the power of God. Amen. That's why so many preachers quitting. That's why so many preachers can't handle it. They're trying to do it on their own. They trying, Man, this thing will drive you crazy. Trying to pastor the church. I learned a long time ago, man, when it was getting, and, and the preacher slipped and said, it ain't your ministry, it's God. Amen. Greatest thing ever happened to me, man, because, boy, it was, it was about to get me down. And so we see more ministers quitting and walking out of the pulpit anymore. Why? Because they're out there on their own. They're not trusting in the power of God. They're trying to do it themselves. In the same way with marriages, man, everybody just trying to make it on their own. What you need to do is get on your knees and say, Lord, get up in here. I need your power. It takes the power of God to walk in the love that he wants you to. It takes the power of God to submit to your husband the way he wants to. It takes the power of God to love your wife the way Christ loved the church. You can't do it on your own. It won't work. By the power of God. Walk in the call. Walk in the call. Walk in it. Walk in it. Walk in it. And as I said, it's a process. I ain't there. Oh, I better read the rest of it to you, don't I? I got time. Y'all didn't hear it all. What did I do with it? I gonna lost it. I've been here so much this week. I'm going to hush. I'm, the husband's even quiet today. <laughs> husband, love your wife just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Listen to the rest of this. That he might sanctify and cleanse it, her with the washing by the water. That he might present her to himself as a glorious body, body not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that he, that, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Now, now I'm, I'm, I'm a part of that uh, bride, the church, men and women. He's the divine bridegroom. I'm a part of that, and it tells me that he might set us apart, sanctify, cleanse us. Washing with the water or the, by the word. And that one day he's going to present her. Going to present us. Himself a glorious church. Without spot. Or wrinkle. Any such thing. But that she should be holy. And without blemish. I don't know about you. I'm still a little spotty. <laughs> I still got some wrinkles. And got a whole lot of blemishes. And, 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 and so. I ain't what I was. But I ain't what it should be. He's still working on me. It's a process. But this thing is wrapped in love. And God loves me. And he cares about me. And he's working with me. And he's moving with me. And he's getting me ready. And I'm telling you right now. You ain't going to be able to do alakazam. And your marriage be just like what it ought to be. It takes some time. It takes some work. It takes some trust. It takes some submitting. It takes some love. You can't walk out of here and do it. Go, you know what the preacher said. Just like the preacher. Give him time, women. <laughs> Give her time. Let's learn to, to walk in this love. Let's learn to, to walk in this love. Listen, Lord, help me. I want to get there. Lord, I want to be that husband. Lord, I want to be that wife that you would have me to be. Now, some of you. Have probably been in some relationship and it left a bad taste in your mouth. Just messed you up. Some of you right might be sitting up in here right now. Messed up. Because you had somebody that wasn't ready to be what they needed to be. 
You had a husband that wasn't ready to be what he needed to be. You had a wife that wasn't ready to be what they needed to be. And it left a bad taste in your mouth. And I'm saying to all the single folks, and I'm saying to all the folks that maybe been divorced, when your mom burnt the biscuits, you didn't quit eating biscuits, did you? Don't you give up on this thing, ordained of God. If God puts the right person in your life and you know it's the right person, you grab a hold of that thing. See, what happens is we don't teach this enough. We don't say anything about it. And most of the time when I preach it, I get shut down. I can feel it. The Holy Spirit shows me folks just closing their mind. So what I'm saying, walk in love. Everything about God. Somebody quote, for God so loved the world that he gave his own. It's all wrapped up in love, guys. It's all wrapped up. I don't care what you're doing. You got to wrap this thing up in love. It's all about that. Anybody get this? Can I help anybody? Lord have mercy. Somebody's going to have a sweet Valentine. And I don't want to, first person, the baby, submit, go, 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 go cook the dinner. That ain't what I said. Amen. Amen. Don't y'all mess this up. This word too anointed for you to mess it up. All right. You know, a lot of times, well, a lot of times a lot of you talk to me and I know some things. And a lot of times I just feel it. And I don't know. And God just said, tell them everything's going to be all right. Amen. Tell them everything's going to be all right. Amen. And I, 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 somebody needs to know, I don't know what's going on. I know some things that are going on with some folks, but I don't know everything that's going on with everybody and stuff. But I need to let somebody know, I don't care how hard it is. God's saying it's going to be all right. Amen. God's saying it's going to be all right. Can I do that? You, can you fix me up? Yeah, Go ahead and fix me up and uh, get that. And while I'm doing this, I can't hear it, Dan. Start it back over. If you want to come to this altar, we're going to pray. We're going to go to battle right now. Huh? One more day Sometimes I wonder How much more Can I take But when I look into The word of God And I know that His promises are true and I know everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. I'm talking to somebody. Everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. Listen here. Sleepless nights Sometimes I have Trying to figure out What can I do But it's you Lord That gives me peace I find rest When I think about you gonna be all right yeah everything uh. everything's gonna be yeah it's gonna be 
everything's going to be, yeah. It's going to be. You just. <laughs> He's everything you need, yeah. It's you, Lord. It's you, Lord, yeah. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right, yeah. Father God, you know what's at this altar right now. You know the need at this altar right now. And God, I know there's power in the name of Jesus. We're trusting in you, in the power of your might. We're trusting in your anointing. We're trusting in your healing power. We're trusting in you to make a way. We're trusting in you to turn it around. Make a way out of no way. Our trust is in you, God. Our trust is in your love for us. Our trust is in your care for us. Our trust, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. It's in you and it's all about you. It's all about your power, God. And right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, have your way. Let somebody walk out of this place today, Father God, knowing it's going to be all right. Let them know, Lord. Let them have that assurance in you, that blessing in you, that it's all right, that you've got this thing in the palm of your hand. All right. I thank you, Father God, for what you're doing in this place right now. Somebody, Lord, couldn't even get to this altar that's so hurting, God, but right now your arm is not too short, Lord. For you to reach out and touch. So only you can, God. They need to walk out these doors today, Lord. Knowing everything is going to be all right. May have to go through the storm. I may have to go through the valley. I may have to go up the rough side of the mountain, God. But it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Oh, yeah. God, I give you praise. I give you thanks. I give you glory for what you are doing in the lives of your people. Thank you for loving us, Lord. I'm going to walk in it. I'm going to walk in that love, Lord. We'll never fail to give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give somebody a Holy Ghost hug up in this place.